one time, I think I was watching one of your lectures or maybe from a conversation before, and you said that I have no idea why the sporadic groups are there. And then I was wondering, like, why do the sporadic groups need an explanation? Like, what would an explanation look like? This goes back to our earlier question of the moonshine conjecture. Like, what does it mean to explain? To me, like, why is it not as arbitrary as saying, I don't know why the number 7,300 exists? Or why are there five platonic solids? As part of we would like to understand them. Um, so, so if you take the compact Lie groups, um, we have a classification of them that you mentioned earlier. You know, there's A, N, B, N, C, N, and E8, and things like that. And th there we've got a very simple explanation of why this list turns up, um, that, that they more or less correspond to finite reflection groups, and we know how to classify finite reflection groups and understand them very easily. And um, this allows us to give a, we, we can give a single uniform construction of all the compact Lie groups. Um, but there's nothing like that for the spradic groups. Um, I mean, we, we can sort of copy what we did for compact groups. And for that, we find most of the finite simple groups. Um, we find all the, all the ones of Lie type. But then there are these 26 left over, which just don't fit into this pattern. And it's very frustrating because what we would like is some uniform way to construct all the finite simple groups. And what really worries me is that maybe we already have the correct way to understand more, which is to go through this 20,000 page proof of the classification. And we're, and, and we're simply too stupid to understand why, why this is the correct explanation.